everyone. I'm going to talk for a couple minutes about the solubility curve. Um, after I'm done talking about this, uh, you guys are supposed to do the questions on page seven, which are about it. Uh, so a solubility curve basically represents a bunch of different substances and then what happens to their solubility at different temperatures. Uh, so you have seen a diagram like this before. Um, it was when we talked about temperature's effect on solubility and we had discussed how if you increase the temperature of something, more can be dissolved, which we can see in the majority of these lines. Um for each of these various substances. You also learned when we were talking about uh, temperature and solubility that gases tend to go down in solubility. So you see a couple lines going downward as well. We are gonna be connecting um, these solubility curves with the ideas of saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated as well. The first thing I'd like to tell you though is that for each of these substances, so up here we have potassium iodide, we have sodium nitrate, potassium nitrate, ammonium chloride, and all these various substances, um, any plot along these lines means that that substance is saturated with that amount of solute dissolved in water and that particular temperature. So for instance, if I were to say, what is the solubility of sodium nitrate at 60 degrees. So here's our sodium nitrate line, and we wanna see where it um, crosses at 60 degrees. So here's 60 degrees, and it crosses about here. And so then we would need to read across the diagram, and we would say, oh, maybe that's 24, 124 grams of solute were dissolved. And that's how much can be dissolved for a saturated solution. Another thing I could ask you is if I dissolve 80 grams of NaCl at 70 degrees Celsius, is that saturated, unsaturated, or supersaturated? So if we have a substance that is at... Oh my gosh, now I can't remember what I said. <laughs> but say we dissolved um, 80 grams of NaCO at 70 degrees. I think that that puts us around here. Here's NaCl's line. Here's 70 degrees. And that is definitely super saturated. Okay. Um, what else? Could I say, which of the following is most likely to be a gas? Would be another question. It would be anything um, going downwards. So we have NH3 and we have um, Ce2SO43. I could say, what substance has the greatest solubility at 50 degrees? The one with the greatest solubility. So then we read and it's going to be the topmost line. We might think NaNO3, but don't forget about this potassium iodide. And technically, that would be way up here. So potassium iodide has the greatest solubility at that temperature. Maybe I would ask you guys which substance has the least solubility or is the least soluble at um, 10 degrees. So then we're looking here, down here at 10 degrees, and that would be potassium chlorate. Maybe I would say the least soluble at 70 degrees. Ah, now it's Ce2SO43. So you can kind of see how this diagram goes, and now I think you've gotten enough explanation to be able to complete the questions on page seven. Let me know if you guys have any questions.